So I've been thinking about the kind of work that I have been doing uh, in the last few years that I've been doing uh, this kind of work in Langkawi. I've classified it as uh, business consultancy because most of uh, the business associates I have in Langkawi uh, who I bring uh, business to in the form of uh, groups and travel and events from KL uh, when they need my services or anything, it's usually a very wide variety of things and uh, it could range from uh, the simplest thing like getting a product from KL because I go to KL quite often uh, to figuring out a particular problem they have, uh, maybe just to get a second opinion from me or to get an opinion of perhaps maybe to trigger something in me where I actually do know uh, someone in KL who has a solution that I could hook them up with. So I was doing a lot of uh, connecting to the BNI members network in KL for the times when Langkawi businesses need some help because uh, well, the BNI network is a global network, it's, it's full of uh, professionals and uh, industry players of every business. So it's easy to connect to a service provider that you need. So the only issue is whether the service provider can provide that service in Langkawi or to Langkawi. So a lot of times, <coughs> uh, physical things that need to travel from KL to Langkawi uh, will usually find the problem of uh, low logistics volume to justify. So, but because uh, I do I do enough of these random. Uh, inquiries for local businesses here, I have managed to pull together a lot of what uh, Langkawi businesses need from KL. So uh, by pulling it, I could get uh, all these things onto more viable <coughs> truck options, logistic options to get here. So in, in a way that, uh, in a way, my work in Langkawi is, is more geared towards a, well, like a business solution provider. Uh, very general, so it's a bit hard to pinpoint what kind of business. I have brought in things from uh, outboard motor boat engines to yacht water pumps to paint of a certain uh, specialty that is not found here to uh, artificial grass that is used for renovation uh, work, glass even, uh, and of course uh, some foodstuffs. Uh, and uh, the majority of my cargo is uh, IKEA furniture because there's no IKEA here and uh, you'll be surprised the number of uh, IKEA uh, customers there are here. Uh, so it's, it's a general business solution provided, not just bringing things. Then the next thing would be like, uh, hey, we need a payment terminal solution that can take all the, the, the payment methods, including uh, e-wallets and cards and, and so on and so forth. So, then uh, in KL, there are a lot of these uh, companies that do it. Uh, I also happen to know one through BNI, so I connected and, and so on. So there are a lot of solutions that are needed here. It's just that um, they, they need a connection to KL because any single person they know, maybe they know uh, one, <coughs> one person in KL of you. Uh, I guess because I have been able to connect a few, then more and more people make me. So I call that a business consultant role. Because I don't do the consultancy for how to take care of your dog and things like that. I guess, okay, it's not personal things, it's business consultant. Uh, and from some of those situations, a lot of my customers are willing to pay a service fee because if they had to go to KL themselves to hunt around and find uh, people, services, products, and things like that, they know there's a cost to it. So I get a service fee, and because I combine a lot of uh, what I do, then it's, it's worth my time. Uh, sometimes the consultancy could be as uh, as local in Langkawi as uh, uh, come and uh, have a look at my guest house. Uh, a lot of people don't want to come here. When they come here, they cancel, they go out and they don't, don't tell me why. And then, uh, can you figure out why? So it could be just something so random. And sometimes the, the solution is as simple as uh, the way you market it. So you market it in that way. The customer gets the impression that they're getting that, and by the time they come, the impression is different. So you market it wrongly. 
So you just need to say the right thing. Uh, then the right market will come. And they love this. So uh, knowing the market is also, it's, it's like uh, the general's well, odd job man solution provider sort of thing. Like, it sounds random, but I'm very focused in Langkawi. So uh, recently, uh, one of my ex event friends, <coughs> who is now also familiar with Langkawi, came over and did a few months stint with me here. Uh, has uh, found his own enlightening and found his own uh, next few steps to move on to. And uh, he is now doing what he clearly calls second opinion. So he's a second opinion consultant. So in a way, I'm quite impressed that he found a very specific description for what he is doing and that he's actually getting customers coming to him for a second opinion. So, because it's so specific, he'll get the right customer and uh, come, they'll come to him for the right service and they'll go away happy and they could refer or recommend others and so on. So, um, I've just had a few more chats with him uh, recently and, and uh, well, he mentioned that some of the customers he had uh, had needs that go a bit beyond just a second opinion, but it's more to get them to a next step. And uh, well, he did say that the, the next steps in his own life that uh, that uh, he discovered he needed to take, uh, many of them were discovered while he was with me in Nakawi. <coughs> uh, and um, well, he was not here as my client. But uh, I used to share a lot of things that I can share, teach a lot of things that I can teach. And I guess he was uh, open to learning some of the things that I myself also do and uh, can apply. So, because he's got now this very specific uh, classification of second opinion, I don't know, coach, or whatever he calls himself, coach, okay. I think. I have just discovered what I need to refine my own description to be. I am not an island business consultant as it is. I think I am a next step coach. Uh, what the hell is that? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> but if you have heard of such an occupation, can someone please describe to me what this is? <clears throat> but short of another description, to me, it's not a label I choose for myself, but I think this is what I'm doing. And if I were to look for a label for it, it's so difficult. And this is now the closest label that uh, fits what I do. Because in all my consultancy, I don't just evaluate what you are doing <clears throat> and tell you about what you're doing, which is what a lot of consultants and consultancies do. They give you the analysis that you couldn't make. And then you figure out your next step. Uh, the next step is the actual thing I do. So regardless of how much information you give me, or how much I can find, or how properly I can tabulate it to the standards of someone else, I will have a next step for the situation that I see you in. So of course, the more I see, then the more refined the next step can be, perhaps even the more accurate the outcome of the next step can be, but I'm always looking at the next step. This comes from even myself because I have always been looking for my own next step uh, to, to an extent where I sometimes don't believe in the next step offered to me and from the person telling me that this is the better next step because I will still end up finding my own next step. Uh, hard to say which is better or which is worse because if I took my own next step, I didn't take their yeah, next step, so I wouldn't have known which one is better or not because circumstances change all the time anyway. But it has gotten me to a path where I continuously can and will take my own next steps. Uh, when I say my own, it doesn't mean that I just came up with it and just feel that ah, I want this and so on. But uh, my own next step means my interpretation of uh, the circumstances I've seen, the situations I've seen, the surrounding factors, the people that it's relating with, and the potential outcome of the chosen next step in relation to the 
people around you, the people that it impacts, the place that it impacts, and so on. So there's a lot of factors to it. It's not it's not a random throwing of a dice sort of thing. So uh, the more you know uh, an environment, then the back the better the next step uh, decision. I don't claim to have the best next step decisions. I have failed in many of my own next steps and uh, and like like the published saying goes, every failure is a lesson to improve the next thing. So yeah, it's true. And uh, it's very true in my case. So I learned from a lot of my failures, what not to do next or how to do it differently next or who to do it next with instead of who I did it with and so on and so forth. So, there's a lot of things to learn, and uh, you need uh, uh, something consistent in your environment. So, if you want to refine your steps, you can refine it in either the same environment or so on and so forth. So, if you keep getting thrown new environments for every uh, situation, then it's hard to get a next step right if you had no track record of failing or succeeding in a previous next step in that situation. So, um, the advantage I have now is that I'm based in Langkawi. So, everything I do is based in Langkawi, which means the next thing I do is going to be based in Langkawi. And it will learn from all the past things I have done in Langkawi. And uh, that makes it easier to progress faster and uh, further. So, because I'm doing this for myself here, and because my mind has run through Simulations, circumstances, and uh, and extrapolations for a lot of things that I, I do, I want to do, I may do, and so on. Uh, it becomes actually a lot easier when I encounter somebody who faces a particular problem. So, their thought for what the solution was could have been uh, a change of something, or spend money on something. Uh, I need to find this kind of person, and, and so on. So, they will look at the next step. So when I see this kind of situations, uh, what I end up doing is extrapolating maybe 5, 10, 20 next steps to see which one can have a better impact by 5 steps later. Okay, so they don't need to know 20 steps later, the world could change. Okay, but at least see beyond the first one step or the first next step. and. Uh, if I can start connecting this to this, and by the time you do this, you will have also this, and this one can then connect to who, and if you don't have the connections, these are the connections that I also can help you with. So these are the multiple steps that even I can step in on your fourth step to help you take you to the fifth step. And so, please always do it step by step. You can dream of something, but if you keep trying to go towards it without taking the steps, you will never get there. So, break it down to small steps. Halfway through the staircase, you may change the steps. It's okay, but you're now third step up. And if you change to something else, you're higher up than if you didn't do this. Okay, so if you didn't, uh, if you keep jumping to the top of the tree, no matter how many times you jump, you will never get anywhere close to the top of the tree. If you start making steps and figuring out how to climb the trunk, you have to go 30, 40, 50 hand steps, foot steps, cut a bit of the wood steps, and so on. But by the time you've done the third step, you're actually three steps up, and so on and so forth. So you get this. And, and if, uh, and, uh, hey, there's a ladder next door, and the ladder does not touch the ground. Now I've reached the ladder, I can just jump in and climb a different ladder to the top of the tree. So many ways to get to the point. The main point is take the step. So, I find a lot of obstacles uh, bugging many people is the fact that they may not see what the next step is, even if it's right next to them. Oh, the mud block is dirty. I don't want to step on it. So, by not stepping on it, you didn't get to see the next step beyond it. So, what if you just stepped on it? Okay, maybe that's not the right thing to step to. Maybe you step one step back, you step on the higher rock behind so you can jump across the mud block. Okay, so, sometimes people's vision are so focused on what's right in front of them. They may not be in a position to see what's three steps further, what is behind and so on. So they need a third party. So I, I don't have a special power and 
special vision or something. I am just a third party. Many third parties may not even bother to tell you what they saw or what they figured out because your business is your business and um, I'm not in a position to to uh, create, uh, uh, to rock your boat. Okay, so, but what if I told you I'm a professional boat rocker and uh, some of the boats I've rocked have managed to speed up? Okay, so now, you may want to engage my services as a boat rocker to rock your boat to get rid of some of the crusty stuff and so you can go faster. Okay, because you may not be able to rock your boat. You're inside. I'm outside, so I can hold the boat and rock it. So, different people in different positions. So, I'm the, the one who can see it from the outside. Uh, not because of special powers, but because I am outside. I'm not in their business. I'm not in their situation. I'm not in their family. So, in a way, that is probably the same advantage that uh, this friend of mine has for his second opinion. Okay, so, I think a lot of people need a second opinion, even if they're not taking the next step. But a lot of people, maybe not as many, need to figure out the next step. Regardless of how many opinions they've had, they may not know how to take a next step. So, what if I rebranded myself to a next step coach or a next step consultant? Is there such a thing? Let's think about it.